Hi, I'm Keith Bachman, Dan Falls EMS trainer. And in today's video, we'll be discussing hardware and wiring of the SM800A. So in this video, we'll be doing some comparison uh, of the newer SM800A to the predecessor, the SM800-1, uh, just for purposes of identification and, and what have you. Uh, so on this slide, you can see all the internal connection points. Uh, not all are marked on here. You'll see them in a little later slide. But if we go and start on the left-hand side here, this is where the auto switching power supply comes in. Then we have two connectors right here that are for uh, the alarms. If I want to localize some alarms. And then we have a new connector here, which is for CAN bus. So in the future, we're going to have CAN bus. You can see it's coming soon. Take note that in a, uh, a new feature is these isolated uh, dividers down here. This is a part of making it UL, uh, the process of UL approval. Uh, new would be this RJ45 network connection up here. So this is internal. Uh, in the past, it was only this one here that said external. If we look over here, you can see the external, which uh, was in the 800-1. But in the A version, we've made it internal. Now there is a, a very important difference that has to be recognized. This is the current and must use connection for your networking. Um, if I want to communicate, this is the connector I'm going to be using, where this one here will be set up for some future um, local bus application. We do have the address switch right here for setting up for the uh, host network of multiple units so they can each have their individual uh, address number. And then this uh, Modbus connector is the same that was in the 800-1. The LAN connector is the same. Actually, this Modbus connector is the same uh, but it will be coming soon that it is activated uh, in the 800-1. It was not activated. Uh, in addition uh, to where this RJ45 is, there is now a USB uh, terminal there. And it is a high power terminal, which means we could charge devices off of that or power devices off of that connector right there. Notice that the keypad is no longer available. It is simply a blank plate. Of course, this is because the 800A is now touchscreen, and that is how you will navigate in the control. When we get to the uh, door on the right-hand side, there are two USBs in there. Now, these were equal in their application, so uh, either one can be used. There is a, uh, an access hole right here to reset the controller, and there's also an LED light that sits in here. Uh, that will be flashing. We'll, uh, that LED light is what you're going to be uh, taking note of if it's flashing in a very steady, steady pattern. We know that the processing uh, in the controller is operating uh, normally. Uh, if you take off that blank plate uh, that was over top of where all the connections are and you flip it over, you will see that there is a clear indication of your connections. Uh, so if we go across, there's your supply alarms. Uh, this would be your CAN bus. We come on across and here would be your mod bus, mod bus two and your lawn giving clear indication of the polarity. So you do want to and must honor polarity here. If there is a chance that you have the lawn TP78, which is going to be considered the retrofit, it's will be a different model number then your layout will be a little bit different inside because I'll have these additional terminals. Again, everything is marked clearly as to the polarity for connections. Uh, and if you look down below here, you can see them in clarity as well. Now this shot is really just one taken out of the manual, which uh, shows you very clearly all the connection points and how the, um, the connections are made again uh, we want to make sure that we're uh, paying attention to our polarity uh, in this connection. There you can see that we also have the Modbus and TP78s. 
Now, a little bit on wiring because wiring becomes a very important piece uh, if we want to be strong um, and have a robust network, we must follow some very specific rules. So required wiring for Lawn RS45 and Modbus. Uh, we'll talk about the switch as well here in one second. Uh, polarity required for Modbus. Now, it just so happens that Lawn doesn't require polarity, but we uh, we really uh, refer uh, everybody to following that good practice of following polarity. Daisy chain or point to point. When I'm making my connections, I want to make sure that I am going point to point to point. Uh, that is the only way that you can make connections when you're hooking up your lawn network or your Modbus network. You have to have an end of line resistor and ELR at both ends. So physically, you will have two ends to your network. When you do, you must put an end of line resistor in place. And a line resistor will be or could be possibly this switch right here. So if my control is the end of my line, in other words, uh, how do I know I'm at the end of my line? I have a single cable coming in. I do not have a cable leaving. So that means that I know I'm at the end of the line. I could turn on this switch and I engage 120 ohm resistor. If the node that we're connected to at the end of the line does not have a switch as we're showing here, then you'll be required to install a resistor such as what we show right here, which is again, 120 ohm resistor. The max length of your complete run, no matter how many wires we're talking on the lawn network is 4,000 foot or on the Modbus will be 4,000 foot. And then there's always the shield that is part of the uh, wiring network. That shield has to be a complete path and it must return back to the 800A and be connected to the shield terminal on the 800A. And lastly, the wire that you're going to be using or the cable, it's going to be a model of EIA RS45 that has all the correct properties to give us the best operating network when we're working with Lawn RS45 or Modbus. Thank you for watching our video. And for more documentation and videos on the system manager, please visit danfoss.com supermarket support.